Go programming language. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to do object-oriented programming in Go. So by the way, I'm going to use a mechanical keyboard. So the keys are loud, as you see. This is Razor, um, Black Widow. 2016 edition and it is it has um, razor green switches so it, it is loud I'm sorry but so let me type this razor black widow I like the key sound I do have a lot I do have different mechanical keyboards and this is one of them and I love mechanical keyboards, I'm a software engineer and I type a lot, at least 10 hours a day. And um, I do like the sound and the feel of mechanical keyboards. So I recommend, I, I cannot go back to mechanical um, other membrane keyboards anymore. So today, as I said, we're gonna um, we're gonna learn um, oriented programming in Go. So that's our main topic. And of course I'm going to be using Golang CLI. So if you have Go install, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I am going to use this version, which is version 1.9 and the new version has released recently, which is 1. Point something, 1. 1.9 point something. It has some security and some, I think, performance improvements over to over the 1.9. All right. Without further ado, let's go ahead and do what we want to do, and that is object-oriented programming. And Go is different when it comes to object-oriented programming, and you're not going to see the same concepts that you are probably familiar with in like languages C sharp, Java, C plus plus, whatever. There's some differences here. Now let's go ahead and learn them. So I'm gonna the first thing is let's create a new file. I'm gonna name it main.go. And with the help of our trusty nano editor, we're gonna edit that file. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to give a name, a package name to my main.go file, which is main package main. Remember that you always name it as main when you want to have an entry point to your application when you execute your file. And that is, of course, static, sorry, uh, function main. So let's go ahead and try something. I'm just going to type fprintln. And let's say hello world. Okay, this is how the syntax looks like. And I'm gonna import fmt package so that I can use the symbol println or function println here. So remember that functions functions are not methods, okay? Uh, methods except uh, implicit or explicit uh, pointers. To its enclosing type. Let's say object. Okay, this is where the difference comes from. Remember that, my friend. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and run this program and see how that looks like. I'm just gonna get out of here. Say yes. So the way you run your program, there are a couple ways, but this is the easiest way to test your application. And as you see, we got our hello world. Great, so let's go ahead and continue editing our stuff. So the way you define a struct, which is simply a kind type of a class in Go, there's no classes in Go, but I'm trying to use other languages so that if you come from other languages, you can at least understand what, you know, the kind of, kind of a corresponding um, construct in Go. So the way you define a new class or struct is this. Let's say 
my world, okay, and I say extract. That's it. And you define there's no, you don't put any functions within your structs. You actually define them as extension methods. And I hope if you come from C sharp, you know what an extension method is. So I'll just, um, if you don't, just tag along. You'll see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and say name string. Okay, that's how we do. That's how we have properties or fields or members. Okay, and then h. You, you, your, your will have your your actual. Let's change it to in person. It's very, very common example, but that's all right, right? Okay. So the way you define a method to that guy is this. Okay. Let's say get name or set name. So you define you define this method and let's say name we, we're accepting a parameter here okay and say name equals name all right let's define another method you see that type comes after the identifier which is p or variable name or parameter name that's the syntax how it works let's say get name you don't have to define a method like that because you can access the name but if you make it smaller then you make it private okay so my friends let's go ahead and say string and that returns string type because we're gonna say this of course we need to return this okay that's that's that that's it that's pretty easy now I can go back and easily define a new struct so but uh, so set name and get name are methods of course okay but the main is a function here main is a function get name and set name are methods because they accept the you know basically define them over person so the syntax is different here we accept this guy after before the name of the method. So the way I define this is there are a couple of ways you can define a variable. One way is this. And then I explicitly define the type of the variable and I say person. Okay. And you say uh, SMR developer and the H is two. <laughs> No, I'm not uh, two years old. Years uh, years old, but never mind. <laughs> um, and then the way you use it is you say get name. Okay. So let's do an example. Let's. Uh, I'll surprise you with a quick <laughs> um, weird weird thing about Go. So I am setting the name. Okay. ASMR. Awesome even though I initially define so there's no new keyword so normally in Java or C sharp what you, this is what you what you would do a person right new person and you will say like name ASMR developer and whatever right here we don't do that there's no new keyword there's new fu a function called new but it's different Never mind, you can still do this if you like. If you want to define the name and have a different order, you can just simply do this. See? And you can do this. That's pretty easy. And now what I'm going to do, I'll just type, uh, I'll put that information, and I say get name. Okay? So I basically I change the name with set name method and I get that name afterwards and print it out to the console. So let's see if it helps, if it works as expected. That's the that's the thing as expected. Okay. So run main.co and as you see we get ASMR developer and hello world. But we 
Okay, let me go back. So what I was expecting is um, ASMR awesome, right? If you go back, I was expecting here ASMR awesome, but I still got ASMR developer and that's not right. Okay, the way you fix this problem is through pointers. Pointers are simply um, references, okay? So when you don't use a pointer, you basically pass by value. It copies the value and pass a copy version of it, not the same thing. So what, that's, that's the reason. And when you change the name here, as you, saw, as you see, you actually work on a different a copy of the person not the the original copy original person okay the way you fix it is you use pointers and you say you pass not the value but the reference to your method so that's how you, that's how you fix it so let's go ahead and see if it helped see ASMR awesome and it worked which is awesome man I like I love the sound of this keyboard <laughs> it's just great okay so I'm just gonna remove this guy because I don't like unnecessary redundant things yeah, all right so and you wonder how you can inherit from another struct yes there is no inheritance here but there is mixins or also known as embedding type embedding aka mixin but there is no inheritance there's no inheritance so the way you define let's say um, we have an employee and that's a struct too and I like this person I don't want to um, I just want to have it right inherit same methods same fields and everything I don't want to reuse I want to read I don't want to um, redefine everything but I want to add something here and let's say employee has something called salary and let's say it's int so the salary but I want to use the same everything from person so the way you do this the first thing is let's write this though golang um, offers and promotes composition over inheritance that is my friends important so what we do here let's say P person what we do here is composition because we compose a, an employee with a salary and a person so let's go ahead and change our stuff here see and the second thing you will you can do is a you can also say a see I don't I don't define the type because the type will be inferred from the type employee so the a variable a will be type of employee so what I'm gonna do of course this is not still correct because this is what you need to do B okay person so this is how you do this B person okay oops and salary is let's say this a thousand still access the set name 
and get name. Of course, you need to do like P and then P. So let's go ahead and try and see if it works. All right, it still works. ASMR awesome. I simply inherited kind of from a person. But I know you don't like it. I know you want to say, I wish there is a way that it looks better and easier and less typing. There it is. Just remove it. Remove the P. And if we, we call this anonymous type embedding because you don't define the variable or the name of your person. You just say, I need person within this struct. And I don't care. And I don't care. Give it a DNA. See? And now I go back here. I say person, right? And now I can remove these guys. I don't need them because now Go allows me to access the methods as well as fields of that person without explicitly saying a, a same person. So now I can say if I'm to print Ellen, I can do like name, okay, or I can still do this a dot person dot name. Let's save this. Let's run it. See, it still works. Oh, perfect. So this is type embedding. And you may wonder what happens when there are two structs that I inherited or I composed from. Let's say a person and awesome employee. Of course, you should have used struct here. And this has name string and awesomeness level, let's say int is awesome, or let's say is awesome. And bool. So I want, I know that you want to inherit it from it, and you would say awesome person or awesome employee. But now there's a problem because both of them have name. So what's going to happen? Okay, let's try and see. It will fail. See, ambiguous selector a dot name because it doesn't know if it comes from awesome employee or person. The way you fix it, easy. very easy. You just have to explicitly say what comes from where. And now you say person and that's pretty much all. Save this. Run it. ASMR developer and everything works just fine. Okay. The last thing is very easy and it is interface. So let's actually do that interface thing in a separate file because it's already crowded here. Let's with a touch command. This is our going to be interface example. So as always, I'm just going to say package. Of course, it will, if you build the whole project, it will fail because basically we're gonna have like basically two main function, but some just is I'm just using go run and pass an individual file name. It will be fine for testing purposes. So the way you define an interface, it's another simple way. Let's say I usually um, self prefix my interfaces with a letter I 
because I'm a C sharp developer, so that's kind of a um, something that sticked to me. But you know, you can do. You, you don't have to do it. Okay, and you say it's an interface, and this time you of course have your method names here. So let's go ahead and say get name and set name. See how I didn't need to specify any parameter name for this parameter, but you can do it. You can do this and it will be fine. If you don't like it, just remove it. Now, I'm just going to quickly type this in. One thing that you need to know is you don't explicitly inherit from an interface. You just satisfy its behavior. And that is called dot typing. Why? If something walks like a duck or speaks like a duck, it is a duck. It does not have to look like one. As long as it behaves like one, and it is one. Okay, that's the duck typing. So from that analogy, we know that we don't have to explicitly define an interface. We just have a struct that satisfy that interface look and feel. So So let's assume that we have a function that gets a new person or change person name. And you say, this is the name, I'm sorry, you're saying this is the person and we accept i person the interface and you say set name and that says change the username or change the name it doesn't matter and okay that's let's let's do this and fmt print ln Person that name. I I'm hearing that you say, hey, you you're making the same mistake. You should have passed a pointer here. You're right. Let's do that. I'm passing a pointer. How awesome it looks. Okay. So when you pass a pointer. Okay, let's pass a pointer here too. Actually, not here just here we'll see so what I'm gonna do is person this time I'm just gonna say person see this is the shortest variable declaration and definition syntax the operator as this so I say person, uh, and the way you define, you make it a pointer, is just use this guy, and name equals 
let's import the FMT. And let's try again. Go to the next interface. Non declaration statement outside function. Wait, oh yeah. I think we did. We didn't close a, a curl brace or something. what it says p person in undefined type person has no field or method person that's important cannot use person as a type by person in argument to change person name person does not implement by person wrong type forget name method yes so right because person doesn't person is an interface and doesn't have anything that called name so that's where I need to change it to name okay don't make the same mistakes that I do here and that's actually how you learn change the name <laughs> all right let's see how 